Energy prices. Right up there with the most interesting subjects on Earth, such as reading the warranty on toasters and year 10 business studies. I'm gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg and, oh, my, my teacher earns less than my dad. I know it's a back pocket issue. My question is, how could something that affects your back pocket be so boring? You know when they have some energy regulator come on and talk about it to explain the energy crisis? There's only one question I'd be interested in hearing that man answer. How have you avoided the temptation to slit your throat? Not that you should. You've got a very important job, it's just... How do you get enough zest for life to power you from one default market offer to the next? You know what? I think I figured out why too. Energy is actually really interesting. It's just that it's a trap. Every time you see on the news some grey suit from the Neutral People Institute come on and say, There's a myriad of reasons for increased power prices, including the Ukraine. A hang glider hit one of the wires in Queensland. ACDC, the band, as their name suggests, used to generate more than enough power from their power cords to not only power their gigs, but the entire eastern seaboard. But unfortunately, like many of our coal plants, they are aging. You know that feeling of being at a two hour uni lecture and you start nodding off to sleep? If the news is simulating that in a three minute segment, it's because they're trying to hide the fact that their sponsors are responsible for the problem they're discussing. And yes, that includes the ABC, as for the last decade, it was proudly sponsored by the coalition. So once again, bring on the Stalinist purge. In the nine coverage, to Carl's credit though, he did let Richard Miles make the point that the Liberal Party, and this is crucial, Scott Morrison knew about the prices hike before the election, May 1. That's when the DMO is supposed to be released. It has been released on that date for years until oddly in an election year with a report completely contradicted one of Scott Morrison's very few dot points he could dress up as good news that we've uh, kept power prices down by 8%. Saying that, well, he knew. He knew power prices were going up by as much as 20%, deliberately buried it, lied about it, yet the deputy leader of the resistance, Peter Dutton, responded to Miles by saying... He's not in opposition. He can't complain. Yeah, that's right, Miles. What are you going to do about a problem that Dutton's government deliberately hid from you that the result of 10 years of deliberate monopolisation on the behalf of Dutton's government, eh? You've had less than a week to fix this! You know those old Looney Tunes? Coalition lit the fuse of dynamite, tied them up, put the name tag Prime Minister on them and said, No, no, you're in charge now, no excuses, where's your explosion insurance? It was, as the kids say, way too much I might add, wild. You can see the attack ads already. Under Labor, energy prices went up at shocking 20%. Uh, oh, we put another O on? Yeah, well, we're gonna leave it up because that's how much it'll go up if Labor gets another term. The only ones giving us some goddamn bloody answers are, of course, the resistance. Who are blaming? Done with supporting the 2050 net zero target already. Remember that? Apparently they're back to their original view that having any energy policy at all is going work. The 2050 target means that you are paying for this on your power bill. The 2050 target means that you're paying for this in your food bill. The 2050 target means you're paying for it on your fuel bill. As we know all too well, energy costs have increased significantly since then and are about to skyrocket further, due largely to self-inflicted harm caused by policies to reduce emissions. Because it's the inevitable result of a power system run for more than a decade, not to produce more affordable and reliable power, but to reduce emissions. Yes, that's exactly what the Liberals are aiming to do, Peter. They aim to cut emissions. That's why they went up by 4% under the Liberals. Honestly, seeing as they're both on Foxtel anyway, I often do get confused between Sky News and the Comedy Channel. The way I tell the difference is the Comedy Channel repeats whose line is it anyway to death, yeah? Sky News just repeats lines from whoever. Wouldn't you get bored of blaming renewables for everything if you're on Sky News? I swear Barnaby Joyce has said Cole keeps the lights on more than Mr. Beast has said Logan Paul. As Credlin explains, this time the reason it's renewables fault is... The more renewables that are in the system, the more gas backup that's needed. Well, you could use batteries as backup for wind and solar, but then you'd have to have a government that didn't structure the entire economic recovery after COVID around drilling so many gas wells in Australia that thank God vapes exist now, because if anyone lights a cigarette... As usual, when it comes to Sky News, the truth is the exact opposite way around. We're using gas less, a lot less. 
Domestic gas consumption is down by 23%. Isn't it amazing that the propaganda is so strong against renewables that you always think, yeah, okay, you need gas as a lifeline for renewables today, but it never occurs to you that the opposite is also true, that because of renewables, we don't have to pump gas all day, every day. And yet Peter Credlin is saying, well, now that I think about it, I don't know what she's saying, but I think she's trying to say the Sky News usual, which is that we need more coal, more gas, more nuclear energy, all energy sources that need a fuel source to be mined. Hmm. I wonder why she'd think that when her owner sits on the board of the largest energy company on earth. The simple facts are that if there are two things Australia doesn't need, it's more YD shops and more gas. Because I don't know how you could be seriously arguing that the largest gas exporter on earth, i.e. us, we export more gas than Qatar. How is that possible? I don't even know if Qatar has solid land. I think it is just gas. Guess that's why it vaguely sounds like a gas planet like Jupiter. No. Just whatever, just leave it in. Anyway, Credlin's theory that Big Windmill has shut down all the gas pipes, but also needs them to keep running at the same time. Don't forget that part. It's an abusive relationship. Doesn't really make sense when 80% of the gas we produce goes offshore. We, and this may come as a shock to you as the biggest producer of gas on Earth, have enough gas. If we really wanted to get all our energy from gas, just have eternal flames everywhere like they do in Turkmenistan, just to brag about how much excess gas we have, we could. In fact, isn't this strange? If the entire media ecosystem, the one that got closer to hitting this point was Bowling Ball. He was going right down the middle of the lane only to get a 17 split right at the end, look. Just remember, we are an energy rich nation endowed with enormous fossil fuel resources, enough to make us the largest exporter of coal and gas in the world. Yet we choose, make no mistake, it's not fate, it is our choice we choose to make ourselves energy poor. Come on, 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 come on. Instead, the nation faces an energy crisis brought about by climate alarmism. No! Damn it, Kenny! 710! So close! He is right, though. We are an energy rich nation, and the reason for the current shortage, and you'll never hear this in the press because they are funded by Chevron and Shell, is that our country has been captured by Chevron and Shell. You'll, as usual, pretty much only hear that from Michael West, who explains that in 2015, Chevron and Shell got their Department of Governing, i.e. the Liberal Party, to allow gas giants to export as much of our gas as they wished, and obviously, they wished to export all of it because they could get more for it in Japan than they could here. As such, the Liberals put us in the ridiculous position where we, as the biggest producer of gas on Earth, find it cheaper to import gas then use our own gas. Jesus, don't you think even after a couple of weeks of Labor being in power, it just doesn't feel real yet. Look, they are, look at this ghoul. They are haunting us from beyond the grave. When you look at the Liberal Party, no other government on earth was that anti its own population. Every other country at least put a minimum guarantee of how much of their gas was to be reserved for its own population. Prices are fine in WA. You know why? Because the Labor government back there said, no, that's insane, we're gonna, keep some of it for our own people, 15% of the gas at least, 15% of the gas here that you're not allowed to export. And look at this, now we're in the ridiculous position where the East Coast is probably gonna have to bum that gas off Western Australia because the Liberals signed all of ours away. And yet, what do you hear from the people responsible for locking us out of our own resources? Look everyone, this idiot's holding a pre-opened Pandora's box. I told you they were gonna be a bad government. Peter, you're the one that opened Pandora's box. No, no, that's not the issue here. The issue here is how you're gonna close the box, Albo. Did you come out of Pandora's box, Dutton? Oh, you said you were gonna elevate the debate. If anyone tries to get our resources back now, you'll be hit with hundreds of lawsuits that'll drag on in court for years while the Liberals keep harping on about how they really care about affordability all of a sudden. In opposition, they cost you $10,000 a year when they were in government, but now they care about affordability. And how are they gonna lower power prices? Well, as the shadow treasurer Angus Taylor stated, yeah, he's shadow treasurer now the most rort-stricken man in parliament other than perhaps Dutton. Second comes right after first. This is the liberal solution after seeing our power prices skyrocket because of giving the gas companies whatever they want for a decade. 
Here's the fresh new idea from the fresh new Liberal team. They're gonna give gas companies whatever they want. I'm telling you, the argument never changes. This is a hundred years of federation. My think would be quite sporting if we gave my donors whatever they wish. No, too late, I gave my donors whatever they wished. F okay, we'll just uh, get the next best option now that the public's been locked out of the best option. Nope, you've been voted out for trying to get the next best option. And now it's time to put my new theory into practice, giving my donors whatever they wish. Your, uh, your donors want the second best option too, yes? Okay, now we're gonna have to go for the third best option. Sorry, third best option's off the table. The cosmic ballet goes on. Just as the endless search for new patrons goes on. Sign up to our Patreon now, as we too need to play our part in the cosmic ballet of... Okay, just gonna pump out 200 articles of pure bullshit. Okay. Now that they've monopolised on everyone's cognitive bias of just accepting the first thing they hear about a subject as reality and conserving energy by not considering a counterpoint, how do we counter that? Too late, we've moved on to another issue. F it never ends! That's why you need to chuck us a few bucks. Come on, help us upgrade our shield so we can fight the Hydra. You all played Hercules on PlayStation 1, right? Like the video if you like PlayStation 1s. See you next time. Please share and comment below. Comment.